I just say how nice it is to sleep in an actual bed? Not that I don't like sleeping in my van. I've gotten really used to it actually, but <laughs> after uh, almost 20 days of sleeping on and off, sleeping in the van, <laughs> I've forgotten how comfortable an actual bed is. So I made it to Savannah. I am in Savannah currently, outside of Savannah. I'm about 20 miles outside of Savannah. Um, I'm actually on Tybee Island, which is, like I said, just outside Savannah. And I have an Airbnb for two nights, a pool, and I'm right next to a, the, the bay side of Tybee Island. So the Savannah Harbor is right next to me. Um, the lighthouse is right behind me. And when I got here last night, um, I desperately needed a shower and I just wanted to veg out for a little bit today. I am going to be staying locally here on the island. I'm not going to be in Savannah today um, for lunch, and it's about 11 o'clock now, so I have about an hour to get there. They open at noon, but for lunch, I am eating at the Crab Shack, which is apparently a well-known place to get fresh seafood around here. That's my plans for lunch, and then from there, I'm literally just crossing the road, and I'm going to be touring Fort Pulaski, which should be free because it's also part of the National Park Service. So I should be able to use my pass and be good to go there. So um, I'm gonna get ready, go get some lunch, and then I'll see you. That was so good. <laughs> I don't think I've eaten that much seafood in a very long time, so I'm really happy that I decided to eat lunch there. Um, such a cool, eclectic place. I got there like 10 minutes before they open, and there was already at least 20 people in line, so very popular place. Um, but you walk in, and... At, before I was sat, they're like, when we first open, it's just a free-for-all. We just let people pick their seats and we find them. So um, there's outdoor seating and then there's indoor seating. They have a big bar. They have two bars. Um, lots of outdoor seating. It's on this big platform and there's a tree that comes up out of the floor. And you're right next to the water. And inside, it's more of like a big bar atmosphere. You sit down and there's a big trash can hole right in the middle of the table where you just throw whatever you want. Everything's disposable. All the plates, cups, you know, silverware, it's all disposable. And so I ordered the Snow Country Boil. <clears throat> and that was... Okay. <laughs> that was uh, a cluster of snow crab legs. One cut up sausage one that they make there uh one like boiled red potato that was cut up half a corn cob and i'm not kidding probably at least two dozen uh steamed shrimp and then i also got a side of coleslaw because i'm a coleslaw fanatic i i like coleslaw and that was 36 dollars. pretty cheap for that amount of seafood i mean that's a lot of food and they have desserts, and they have a big drink menu, and just a really cool place. They have a gift shop. They also have this, like, um, I don't know if it's an alligator rescue, but it's kind of just a big outdoor space for alligators. And there's, like, 60 of them. And there's a little pond. You can see them all. You can feed them if you want. And then 
like I said, they have the gift shop. So really cool place. I, I can't imagine how busy it gets in the summer because there's not a lot of parking, which surprised me the most. I mean, it looked like they could feed a lot of people at one time, but not a lot of parking. So I don't know if people drive up in like bikes and golf carts or they just walk. Um, but if you're ever in Savannah, Tybee Island area, definitely check out the Crab Shack. Now I'm on my way to Fort Pulaski, which is literally just across the road. And I will be touring that. And there's also a small little trail that takes you to, excuse me, this lighthouse. God, I'm still full. <laughs> ah. um, you can't access the lighthouse, but you can walk out to a platform and look at it. So I will be doing that. Fort Pulaski National Monument is located on Cockspur Island between Tibby Island and Savannah, Georgia. Wooden pilings were sunk up to 70 feet deep into the mud to support an estimated 25 million bricks. And it was finally completed in 1847 after 18 years of construction and nearly $1 million in costs. Fort Pulaski was under the control of only two caretakers until 1860 when South Carolina seceded from the United States and set in motion the Civil War. While the fort was prepared for a possible infantry attack, it had never endured a direct land assault. Using 36 guns, Union troops began the long bombardment of Fort Pulaski. The rifled projectiles could be accurately fired from four to five miles away. And within 30 hours, the bombardment had breached one of the fort's corner walls. Shells now passing through the fort were dangerously close to the main powder magazine. Reluctantly, the fort was surrendered, and amazingly only two soldiers, one Confederate and one Union, were injured in the attack. And Fort Pulaski remained in Union control for the remainder of the war. After the Civil War ended, the fort began to fall into disrepair. In an effort to save the old fort, the War Department finally declared Fort Pulaski a national monument on October 15, 1924 by Presidential Proclamation of Calvin Coolidge. Fort Pulaski was open to the public only for a short time before the beginning of World War II, which would see further use of Cockspur Island and the fort as a section base for the U.S. Navy. After the war, Fort Pulaski reverted back to the control of the Park Service and was listed on the National Register of Historic Places on October 15, 1966. Well, unfortunately, that was as close to the lighthouse as I could get. Nice walk. Now I'm headed back to the fort. I'll walk around for a little bit, and then I think I'm gonna take a nap. I'm not fully sure if you can hear me or not, but uh, I just wanted to take a second. If I had to pick a favorite time of day, it would be right now. <laughs> And if I had to pick a favorite pastime, it is walking the beach and looking for shells and just hearing the ocean. Nothing brings me more peace than being here like this. And uh, I get emotional because it's just... It's one of those gifts, you win either way, you know? You either get a cool seashell, or you see, you know, a dolphin, or a flock of seagulls. 
where you turn around and you see this. And I'm so just happy in this moment. And I just want to let everybody know. <laughs> So I just got to my Cracker Barrel location for this evening uh, after two nights on Tibby Island. Today, what I did, uh, I was in downtown Savannah today. I checked out of my Airbnb at nine. Uh, I was about 25 minutes from the city center and I drove in, I got my parking spot. And from there, I was really close to um, River Street, which is um, these really old cotton selling district in Savannah uh, that has been converted into restaurants and gift shops and shops in general. And you can stroll the whole thing and it's really cool. And it's like cobblestone streets. It's a very, very old area, very industrialized area uh, of Savannah. And so I was really close to there. So I walked that entire strip from one end to the other. And then for lunch, I had already booked a lunch tour on the Savannah Riverboat Cruise. So that was my lunch for the day and uh, that was really enjoyable. It's this massive boat and there's like four floors and they have a bar and like a little cafe on each floor. Actually, I think the first floor is more formal dining where they do dinner tours, dinner cruises. Um, I was upstairs on the third floor and uh, I got some lunch and a Diet Coke <laughs> and I sat outside and enjoyed it as we went down the river. Um, the tour itself lasted about an hour and a half so it left at 1 and we were back by 2.30 so a decent, decent amount of time. Um, you can load the boat as early as noon so a lot of people do that, eat their lunch and then find a good place to stand or sit elsewhere on the boat which is what I did I loaded at noon and took my time eating lunch um, and then it yeah it just took you from one end of the Savannah Harbor and then it took you down to the other end um, and it kind of someone was speaking the entire way down and very informative um, for that it was $36 the National Prohibition Museum. Uh, I could have skipped that one. It looked cool on the website and some people had told me about it, uh, but for $16, uh, I mean, it's interesting to learn about Prohibition and why that started and the things that happened during that time, but it's not really a piece of history that I'm really interested in. Uh, so I could have done without that one, but I figured I was there. Why not do it? From there, uh, by that time it was about 4.30, walked back to my car, I uh, got out of the garage, and I drove to Forsyth Park, which is this big, massive central park that's in Savannah. It's a very big uh, hangout place when the weather's nice. Uh, there was a ton of people there. There's a beautiful fountain in the middle. There is several little monuments, live oak trees, uh, just a gorgeous park. I mean, there were people doing photo shoots and I'm not sure, but I think a couple got engaged and they were taking pictures, I don't know. But, um, but just a very vibrant, uh, lively area. Uh, and then surrounded by the park are, um, some really beautiful homes which reminded me of Charleston but not quite like Charleston um, but just a really beautiful area I'm going to end my tour of Savannah here and then just do a couple pictures towards the end and I will see you on the next video so take care